Welcome to our first official video of Galway Film Centre's Guide to Virtual Production. In this video today, I'm going to be covering what hardware and software we utilise when we work with virtual production. As you delve into virtual production, it can be difficult to identify what content will suit you and your needs. As a beginner, you can spend a substantial amount of time searching for a viable workflow. Of course, you need to do your research, but we're here to show you what resources we found useful to us. So let us help you on the beginning of your journey into virtual production. What is virtual production? It has regularly been said that virtual production is where the physical and digital worlds meet. Virtual production is a broad term used to encompass the emerging possibilities of real-time filmmaking. Every virtual production setup will differ. There are several factors you need to consider when deciding on the workflow for you. We opted for a real-time hybrid method for virtual production. This method consists of several defining features. We use real actors and objects that are placed within a virtual environment or virtual set. The majority of the world is CG. To achieve the blending of the real and the virtual, we use a green screen so we can key out the real world background and replace it with a virtual set. We're using a HTC Vive Pro headset with Vive 2.0 trackers to track our virtual camera. This is what aligns our real world with our virtual world. We are working in Unreal Engine 4 for most of our work in virtual production. By using a hybrid method, it allows us to use real-world objects and live actors in the scenes to help blend the worlds together. Those four key components outline the restrictions and necessities needed for a virtual production shoot. Considering we already had this green screen available to us, going the hybrid method made the most sense. Do take the time to research into other methods of virtual production. The goal for our setup was to use what we already had and to be as budget-friendly as possible. Now I'm going to give you a quick tour of the hardware that we have here at the Galway Film Centre for virtual production. When starting out with virtual production, having a single PC to do all the legwork may be all that you have access to. With non-complex shots and careful planning, this can be a usable workflow. Essentially, we are relying on this PC to handle most aspects of our shoot. Our main PC specs are as follows. 128 gigabytes of RAM, an Intel i9-10900X, a 2080 Ti graphics card, and we're using Windows 10. The PC itself is decent and can handle Unreal Engine with ease. However, once we are simulating and tracking, this can become intensive on the computer. So we need to be smart with our assets and optimize them and our scenes where necessary. In another video, we will be looking at our setup for multi-user sessions from various locations in Unreal Engine 4. This method still has the core workflow for a single PC, but it does allow for additional members of your team to work on the project when necessary. Inside the PC, we also have an Agicona 4 card. This card lets us use SDI for any inputs and outputs of video to Unreal Engine 4. This is important for getting our information from the camera to Unreal, and also for connecting our desired outputs from Unreal to any external monitors or to our video recorders. Here on top of our PC, you can see the Blackmagic video recorder we are using. We can set the recorder to record specific outputs or layers in our composition from Unreal Engine. For example, we could have our camera recording just the video, Unreal Engine can record the entire comp, and this recorder can record solely the CGI background. This means we have flexibility in case we need to edit anything down the line of production. We are using the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2. As you can see, we also placed and secured our Vive tracker onto the camera. Later on, when we find our entrance pupil, we will be able to measure the distance of the tracker from the camera to get an accurate location. The HTC Vive Pro headset comes with two base stations, one headset, and two hand controllers. We have expanded out from this by having four base stations in total. This allows for us to have more accurate tracking over a wider area. We also have several Vive trackers. These are the Vive 2.0 trackers. It is these trackers and the base stations that allow for us to create a virtual camera that is linked to our real world camera. According to Vive's official tips for setting up Steam VR base stations 2.0, each base station has 150 degrees horizontal field of view and 110 degrees vertical field of view. 
Ideally, you want the base stations to be higher up so nothing blocks them from seeing one another. They should ideally be 25 degrees facing down to the floor. Four base stations can cover an area of up to 10 meters by 10 meters and add additional accuracy. None of this hardware would matter if it weren't for the software being used with it. For the most part, this software is free when being used on a personal level. As always, there are alternative solutions out there. The ones that we mention are what we currently use. Unreal Engine 4 is a game engine. For anyone unfamiliar with Unreal Engine 4, it can be accessed through the Epic Games launcher. Once downloaded, you can instantly see a vast number of helpful tutorials from Unreal Engine 4 online learning. You can also browse the content available in the Marketplace. Every month, the Marketplace offers free assets that you can instantly use in your virtual production levels. As for the actual game engine, we are using version 4.25.3. To connect your VR headset to Unreal Engine, you need to use Steam VR. Steam VR can be accessed by downloading Steam and installing the Steam VR plugin. This allows you to quickly set up your physical space with your Vive base stations. Following this, we can begin getting the headset to work in Unreal Engine 4. Steam VR is responsible for creating the center of your virtual world. Perforce is a software that offers source control. Source control, or version control, is a practice of tracking and managing changes to projects. When working on a project personally or collaboratively, it is important to have a rigid and foolproof method of saving, backing up, and storing your projects. Perforce allows you to do this as an individual and as a team. Perforce was an important part of our workflow when we began working collaboratively. Nutanix Frame is an online browser-based service for creating virtual desktops. When working remotely, we quickly discovered not everyone's computers were up to spec, and some found it difficult to run certain tasks. By creating a virtual desktop, we could give anyone on our team a decent PC to work on for minimal cost. We use Amazon Web Services for hosting our virtual desktops with Nutanix Frame and for using source control with Perforce. We found it efficient to have one service that allocates space for both of our softwares that we need. Most of what I have touched on today will be explained in much more detail in further videos and posts. But for now, I hope this gave you a good insight into the different hardware and software we utilize when working in virtual production. If our setup here seems daunting, don't worry. Even though we have this lovely space, we achieved great results while working from home. All you need is a computer, a camera, a tracking system, and a makeshift green screen. And you're ready to go. Start small and expand out. We all started somewhere. As always, be sure to check the links in the description for our recommended list of resources for all aspects of virtual production. We would like to thank our partners Screen Talent Europe and Galway 2020 for making all of this possible. In the next video, we'll be covering Unreal Engine in more detail by showing you how to set up your first project and having it ready for a virtual production workflow. We will be working in Unreal Engine 4.25.3, so if you haven't got it downloaded already, get to it before the next episode comes out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for even more virtual production.